again, viewers, and welcome to another edition of The Now Show. Your show for overcomers and winners, where we take you on the journey of self-discovery and becoming the better version of you created. On today's episode, we're going to be talking focus never too young. And with me is a very interesting young lady whose story is going to tell us about being focused very early, Miriam Simon. So I will tell you about Miriam. Miriam Simon is a 20 years old automobile mechanic in Lagos. She is the last of six children. She started automobile mechanic when she was 18 years old. Her specialty is Mercedes Benz. Mm. But she can also work on different models of cars. Welcome with me to the now show, Miriam Simon. So Miriam, you're welcome to the now show. Wow, 20 years old. A successful <laughs> mechanic as it's well. You know, your story is so inspiring and encouraging. Because I say to people, I say, you know what? Once you know what you want, it's always good to go for it. And here you are, you started at 18. So how long ago, before then, did you know that so what you wanted to do? Um, I didn't really know what to do that. Okay. After school, I was not my sister, I'm sure. She was into her parents. Okay. So, she had this friend who was into, was into the same thing. So, he needed someone to like help him. He just opened the book shop. Okay. So, he needed someone to help him in the office. Like, mm -hmm. for, um, opening the job packs and all. Okay. So, my sister was like, I should just join him since um, it's not something to get. So, it's something I can do. So I was with him, then gradually I started joining, like when they're working, I'll just stand by watching them and then all of a sudden I started on the journey and then I told them that I want to be an apprentice. So, so from interest, you now went ahead yeah. and you went for it. Mm. But all along, did you want to, you know how it is that everybody says, okay, after secondary school, the next thing is university and so was that not your plan to go to university it was okay so <laughs> everything just changed wow everything just changed yeah and i felt like it was better having something to do before going to school so going to school and coming back to learn something so i just wanted to have something then in the fact wow you know people would usually say that go to school and then when you come back from school, you now start looking for a job and that's when they all join the employment queue and things like that. But here you are, you are, I mean, you have a trade in hand and your plan is still to go back to school at some point. Yeah. But definitely when you are back in school, you're going to be <laughs> an established yeah, as yeah. well. Wow. So what is your typical day like? Hmm. You wake up in the morning, you are going to the workshop, okay. looking forward to those cars that you are going to. <laughs> okay. So, how do people see you? You are a young female in an industry that is considered to be for males. I mean, this is what makes this very interesting. Not only are you young, you are also female in an industry that people don't consider a female world. So, what kind of reactions do you get from people? A lot of some people, they're always surprised. Like most of the time when I meet like new people, mm -hmm. they're like, what do you do? Mm -hmm. They're expecting to hear um, tailoring or all sorts of things. Because there's some there's, there's some, some jobs that are fingers for the woman. Yeah. Like, okay. And I'm like, I look so smooth, and they'll be like, No, you're joking. Mm -hmm. Let me see your hand. And I'm like, this is her. They're like, no, no, you can't be serious. You're joking. Because, because your hands don't look like the hands of somebody who does those kind of things. <laughs> wow, wow. But people that come to the workshop and they see you, what's their reaction? They're always surprised. They're like, wow. Mm -hmm. You're a lot younger. Yeah, you're doing that so impressive. Like, mm -hmm. I get a lot of comments. I like the way you work. Okay. And all. So do you get more people come to you or more people run away from you? Yeah. <laughs> because it's, it's either of the two. You know how it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. so I'll say I get them coming. Okay. Here. Okay. Okay. So you are the last in your family. The last child. The last child. So what did your older ones have to say when you told them? Did they think you were crazy when you wanted to start this? 
no reaction. So they're like, Miriam, are you sure you want to do this? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yes, I really want to do it. They're like, oh, it's actually nice because it's not something that is common. It's that's really common. Mm. Supporting me. Okay. Are your parents? Yeah, my mom and dad is actually. Okay, so your mom, yeah. how does she feel about you she, doing this? She loves it. She's always, uh, she, she praises me all the time. Okay, and I'm sure we prayers. Yeah. You know how mothers are? <laughs> <laughs> prayers every day that nothing should happen to my daughter. You know, those heavy equipment is dropping on her or something like that. Do you get scared of things like that? Maybe the heavy equipment dropping on you or. I would say no because I'm always careful. Okay, okay. You're always careful. Yeah. Are, are there other ladies in the workshop? No. Or you are the only one? Wow. So what do you what do you consider to be your impact in that environment, especially being female in a male-dominated environment? Um my impact. Mm-hmm. I just want them to know that um there is there is nothing in female that I'm not doing. Okay. And so do you hammer it? <laughs> do. <laughs> do you do you find yourself saying it a lot to your colleagues? Yeah, because there are some things mm-hmm. that they will be like, you can't do that. And oh, I'm like, what makes you think I can do that? Mm-hmm. You're doing it, so I can do it as well. <laughs> so. so you have to fight for what you want. Exactly. Mm, mm, mm. So any female who is coming into a male-dominated environment what advice would you have for them you know because it's not an easy place to operate in mm-hmm. but here you are you've been doing it for two years now so you must have gathered some experience that they can learn from they can glean from so what would you say what would be your advice i would tell them to be strong mm-hmm. and to not feel um to not feel like they can't do it because mm-hmm. most of the time i feel like I, I get scared sometimes, I'm like, can I really do this? But at the same time, I'm telling myself, like, go girl, you can do this. Go girl, so you can do this. I feel like you shouldn't feel like you can't do anything. You can do anything as far as you know what you're doing. Hmm. And you really want to do it. So your passion drives you? Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Hmm. So once you love it, you just make sure that you go for it yeah. and everything. Hmm. Wow, wow, interesting. You know, um, talking about school, Okay, so you've done your secondary school. So, um, what what are your plans? Tell me. Mm-hmm. How soon do you see yourself going back to uni, for example? I'll be. I'll say. Um, I think I'll get my I'll get my certificate next year. Okay. So once I'm done, then school for that time. So how how long does the apprenticeship uh, apprenticeship scheme take? Like three years? Yeah, three years, no, because I'm also going to other parts, so two, three, four years. So okay. Um, next year. Why did you decide on Mercedes Benz? Tell me. <laughs> Tell me, why Mercedes Benz? Yeah, where I started working, mm-hmm. we went to Mercedes Benz. Okay. Just Mercedes specialized in Mercedes, so I got to love the car. Okay. But then I'm like, I want to fix other parts too. So. Okay, not because Mercedes is for a certain category of people. You know how it is, it's not everybody who can drive a Benz. It makes it a Benz. <laughs> okay, okay, it's a good car. Yeah, it is. Okay, okay. So you love? Yes. I've never driven one, so that maybe I'm, I'm I'm hoping that you will sell that car to me. You know? Okay, okay. That's interesting. That's interesting. Wow. So, do you have guys come up to you for a relationship because you're doing this and they run, <laughs> or they run from you? Um, mm-hmm. I would say yes, but I'm always working. So you're always working. Yeah, like I don't really have time for that. I'm always going to work. I work from Monday to Saturday. So okay. on Sundays I'm just at home. Okay. And maybe sometimes I'll just chill my friends. Okay, because I mean, I have, haven't worked six days of the week. Exactly. So you just want to rest. Wow, wow, wow. So you go out in the morning and come back very late. So are you telling me that no socializing at all at your age? Uh, at 20? Uh, is that part of the focus? <laughs> not to be <laughs> not to socialize at all. Not that. Mm-hmm. I'm always tired. So on Sundays I just want to rest. Wow. I will only come out with my friends are like, Miriam, and me have some more. Mm. That my classmates, they're doing things I know that yeah, I do go out with. We'll just be at home. Maybe we'll go to one of them. 
all of their houses and okay. they just chill, get pizza, drink, mm-hmm. or some drink, and then and just can't fit like whole days for the CD. Okay. So for you to focus, you must concentrate on what you're doing. Yeah. And give it your all. So even if it affects your social life. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Social life will come later. Wow. Yeah. Wow. When you have everything. How many people your age would agree with you? <laughs> I'm just wondering about that. Yeah. So your advice to them is that they should focus, focus. on what they're doing. Yes. And the social life will come later. Hmm. I hope you're hearing that for the young ones out there who think that it's all about socializing and mixing that with the things that they're doing. Here we are hearing from Miriam that to keep your focus, you actually need to leave the social life, not leave it completely, but I mean, concentrate on your focus, focus on your focus, like they say, <laughs> and the social life will come later. Wow, 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 wow. Interesting, interesting. Ah, so Miriam, um, where do you see yourself in five years' time, for example? In five years' time, I would say I'm seeing myself in my own garage. Wow. So really? yes. Wow. Because after, when I'm done, like, once I'm done, I really want to, like, I'll try all my best to have my, instead of, um, even, even though I'm in school, I mm-hmm. would still love to open one. Okay. Okay. Wow, that's that's really, really, really brave of you to say that you want to have your own garage, you know, in five years' time. In five years' time, you'll be just 25. Wow, wow. It's really interesting to hear that. So you, you want to now mix that with school. So that means that your location is very important. So you have to have school run where you, wherever you have your garage. Mm, mm, mm. So are you now looking at training other women, training other females. What is your, do you speak to other females about what you're doing? Because this is part of why we're bringing you out so that people will know out there that, yeah, people can consider it a man's world, but there are some women who are actually conquering this world, who are making a mark in this world. So do you see yourself talking, having to talk to other ladies? Do they ask you questions? Are they, are they interested when they see you? Yeah, the thing is, when they see me, they see they actually see this job as something very difficult. So everybody, so they're like, everybody I can't that. do that. I can't do that. I can't do this. Hmm. But then I tell them that it's actually a good job. You get to love it. But it's your choice. It's your choice. At the end of the day, yeah. it's actually your choice. That's true. So are there myths that you want to correct about you know the the automobile industry that you know like you said a lot of females look at it that oh they're heavy stuff to be moved they can't do that so are there other things you want to correct so that we know i'm sitting here i would not think about it because like you said somebody would say oh how can i so it's not a dirty job it's not the the things are not heavy to move you can do it it's just for you to be willing yeah. and to have the passion. Yes. How do I even develop the passion? Yeah, I don't have any passion for these <laughs> fixing cars right now, but I could. I could just by talking to you. It's actually kicked off a bit of interest in me. So for some young lady out there who is watching and you want to ignite that interest very well, what would you say to her? I would say um, to me, having to do this kind of job, mm-hmm. it makes me feel like um, I'm powerful, I'm, I'm unique. Like, wow, definitely. It is mm-hmm. It is not something that is common. So having to do something like that is so beautiful. I would mm-hmm. say it's, it's beautiful. Okay. And then nothing is too hard to do. That nothing is too hard to do. Mm. Okay. Then for those who think apprenticeship is for school dropouts, mm-hmm. what do you have to say to them? That's, um, I wouldn't say that's true because mm. not just, there are lots of graduates actually, mm-hmm. they are coming back to learn something. Mm. So I mm. wouldn't say being an apprentice or 
people that are apparently are, are drop out. Um, mm. That's not true because. Uh, in so, so, at some point, I would say the, the apprentices sometimes mm-hmm. are having more than the graduates because right now the things are hard. Yes. The graduate there's no job, like <laughs> unemployment. No job. Mm-hmm. Then, so people that have things doing now mm-hmm. are the one winning. Okay. People that have things doing now are the ones winning. So it's always good to go in some trade or something that. You can use your hands yeah. so that you are in a better position exactly. rather than going to school and hoping that oh somebody out there is going to employ me employ yourself exactly <laughs> improve exactly. yourself <laughs> do something for yourself yeah. that empowers you wow 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 because you know before the the that's why i said any myth that we want to correct because it was always like okay when your child is not doing well in school you know what Come and go and learn something so that you know we can rest, you know, and everything like that. Or maybe a child that is not doing well, you know, parents push, push, push. Oh, you must go to school, you must go to school. They don't want to feel that. How ah, can I? Eh, my child will be, you know, they will say my child is learning the trick, but there's nothing wrong in it. If your child is not doing well in school, maybe the child is not just cut out for academics. So, why don't you just allow the child to go and learn something? And they can become Some great, like the period is now, you know, which is the beauty of this. You know, that for parents, you need to learn the lesson from Miriam. So it's not just about whether you're good academically or you're not good academically, it's just a passion. If your child has a passion, support the child and let them, you know. And if your child is not good academically, there's nothing wrong in them going to learn the trade so that that trade can help them to become better. I mean, they won't have to queue and be waiting for a job or something like that. Mm, mm. Well done, well done, well done. You know, I, I'm, like I said, I'm already inspired you know, and encouraged and everything because most especially because of your age, because between 18 and 20, most young people don't even know where they're going. You know, people are still telling them this is what you should be doing. And everything. So when you find a, a teenager, who knows what they want and they are actually going for it it calls for a lot of applause you know for them you know that at 18 you knew this was what you wanted to do you went for it you're making the success of it you're still there you have plans around that same thing of getting bigger and by his grace you're going to become so big that you're going to be known all over the world. Exactly. <laughs> I remember us there, though. No, my <laughs> no, you know, you're, you're just you're just an encouragement and inspiration, and uh, not only for young people, also for the older ones. Because even as parents, I'm sure they can pick up something from this discussion. Because maybe there's just a family who they're having trouble with their child, and they've been wondering. Where do we go to? What next? They break, they have done deliverance, they have done all manner of things. You know, sometimes it's the practical things that we need to do. It's not just about allow the child to come up with what they have a passion for and just support them. And I think now a lot of young people are developing interest outside academics. Would you say yes to that? Yes. Mm. Because we've seen that they don't have any issues, mm. they need to do something. Mm. Mm, mm. So those kind of interests, um, I know some people are developing photography, um, filmmaking, uh, content development, um, you know, so support your child. But what, what would be your advice to parents? Parents, mm-hmm. I would say, and there's this thing about parents. Okay, that way, okay. getting there. <laughs> like, I don't me. know, but most parents, mm-hmm. I don't know. They, they feel like they know what the child wants. Hmm. Like the, hmm. the child might not want to go for that tailoring. Hmm. The child might want to be um, um, something else. But because they want it, they'll be like, I want that. Hmm. And then the child doing that, the child won't do it as much as they want to. And the hmm. child is not going to love what they're doing. So I just feel like they should just 
go with their children, whatever thing that they want to just support them instead of mm. telling them what to like or mm. showing them what to mm. like. Mm. Just mm. let mm. them like it and let them do it. So your advice for parents is do lot things over your children. Yeah. Listen to them. Yeah. Find out what they want yeah. and support them in what they want to do. Yeah. Wow, amazing. I, I do hope that parents out there are listening and um, with this few lines that you said, you've been able to help somebody because the truth really is that there's always a battle between, between parents and children. I mean, it's, um, I, I've been there, I am there, you know, and it's like, sometimes you are at your wit's end, you don't even know what to do. It's really for parents who, who believe that there's a certain class my children should be in, or there's a certain way um, society must perceive my children. Exactly. So it's not about society, it's about you and your child. Wow, amazing. Hmm, Miriam, yeah. thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's always good to listen and hear these things, especially for people who don't want to. You know, I think, I think societal, our culture has um, brought us up. I'm not making an excuse for parents, you know, that we don't listen to children. You know, it's like we talk to the children and they must listen. But here you are telling us that it's not just about talking to them. We have to listen. Wow, amazing, amazing, amazing. You see that um, this thing, you're helping us deal with so many issues. That is where even for parents, for the young for you know and um, okay we, we seem to have spoken about females and you know they so what would you say to the young person out there about focus yeah i would say they shouldn't waste their time because time is for nobody mm. so the earlier the better mm. so i'll advise them to find something going because no one knows no one knows yeah. can you express it on that no one knows because you don't know what life you're going to bring tomorrow. I mean, mm. you might have the opportunity to learn something today. You don't know what thing will help you. Mm. You don't know how to help you in the future. So I feel like if you have the opportunity to learn a certain thing and then you don't know if God is preparing you for the future. Because mm. mm. really, I didn't see myself doing this. So I feel like this is God's this is God's plan, this is part of God's plan. I feel like he wants something for me. And I feel like he wants something for everyone out there too. Mm. So just find something doing so that tomorrow is going to be better for you and for everybody. Just find something doing because tomorrow is going to be better for you for everybody. Yeah, it's, it's looking to me like um, you're already giving us your last word. But Miriam, you know, there's something that we do on the now show, which we call the last word which is something that you want to leave our viewers with even if they don't remember the entire half hour of our conversation but something that you want to leave with them so your last one Miriam yeah I would say life will come with so many challenges here but then you need to be strong No more. <laughs> wow. Now we're getting emotional. Oh dear. No matter what life brings up you. No matter how it beats you down, you need to get up. Mm. Don't let it beat you down. I felt like quitting so many times, but then I was like, no, you won't beat me down. I will stand up and I will stand up again and again and again till I get to where I really want to be. So I feel like no matter how, no matter what it is, no matter how hard it is, tomorrow is going to be great. Tomorrow. Is so great. just pray, believe in God. And I'm very sure God is not sleeping, so he's listening. Or oh, whatever thing you're going through, it's just you're just challenging it. And you're going to pass them. Wow. So Wow, very true. I need to hold your hand for <laughs> this. Wow. God bless you. You have been an inspiration and a great encouragement. And I'm sure your story is going to inspire many. Well done. Keep being the stronger, focused lady that 
that you are and you're going in places. So until we come your way again on the now show, I, I know it's been a bit emotional towards the end, but that's how it gets. We don't plan how this goes. But we'll come your way again on the now show. Your regular host, Apostle Leo Zalosho, signing with Mary, signing.